Hi, everyone, and welcome to Conversation in Interventional Cardiology. My name is uh, Philippe Genereux. I'm the director of the Structural Heart Program at Morristown Medical Center uh, in uh, Morristown, New Jersey. I was uh, fortunate enough to be the guest editor for the JSKY special issue on heart failure. Today, I'm really honored uh, to represent JSKY and the editor-in-chief, Dr. Alexandra Lensky. Uh, mm -hmm. You can find us online at jsky.org and follow us on um, X, or formerly known as Twitter, um, at uh, at my JSKY. Um, JSKY is the home of all the official Sky documents. Uh, we are today to discuss a very important document uh, recently published in JSKY uh, titled Cardiac Contractility Modulation for Heart Failure, Current and Future Directions. I'm very pleased to be joined by a next team panel of leaders and experts and authors. And congratulations for your beautiful uh, manuscript that uh, is uh, published in JSKY. Um, first, we have Daniel uh, Pipilas, who is a fellow in electrophysiology at the Dimula Center for Cardiac Arrhythmia at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. And Theophany Mela, Associate Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School, also at the Dimula Center, uh, Arrhythmia Center uh, at Massachusetts uh, General Hospital in Boston. So thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm going to turn it to Dr. Pipilas to start the conversation. Uh, I know you prepare some slide to summarize your paper. So please, Dr. Pipilas, um, you can begin. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Genero. And uh, thank you for being here, Dr. Mella. Thank you to JSKY for uh, allowing us to share our work um, in the most recent, recent issue. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, so uh, heart failure is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality and affects roughly 6 million American adults. Heart failure manifests as a result of various underlying pathophysiologic mechanisms with different underlying mechanical and electrical dysfunction, depending on the etiology. Optimal guideline-directed medical therapy is one of the cornerstones of management for patients with low and mid-range ejection fractions, and device-based therapy affords additional benefit to these populations. Cardiac resynchronization therapy is the most common device-based therapy that I'm sure we're all familiar with and offers mortality benefit to patients with reduced ejection fraction with wide QRS by restoring ventricular synchrony. But this leaves a gap in available electrical therapies for patients with a narrow QRS in whom CRT is contraindicated. We're here today to talk about cardiac contractility modulation, which is a device-based therapy for patients with a range of ejection fraction and a narrow QRS. The CCM system delivers biphasic electrical stimulation to the ventricle during the absolute refractory period to augment left ventricular contraction without electrical excitation. The system itself is implanted similar to other cardiac implantable electronic devices like a pacemaker or a defibrillator, and it's currently FDA approved for patients with New York Heart Association Class 3 symptoms with ejection fractions between 25 and 45 percent. So the mechanisms through which CCM works are multifactorial. The main mechanisms which have been demonstrated in cellular and animal models include restoration and calcium metabolism and handling, and alteration and expression of the fetal gene uh, expression profile that is typically seen in chronic heart failure. Over the short term, CCM promotes increased LV contraction via improved calcium handling, and over longer use, the LVEF improves and reverse remodeling ensues at the global ventricular level. The two major clinical trials that led to the breakthrough of FDA approval of CCM um, in 2019 were FIX Heart Failure 5 from 2011 and FIX Heart Failure 5C from 2018. So in FIX Heart Failure 5, 428 patients with a left ventricular ejection fraction less than or equal to 35% and New York Heart Association class 3 or 4 symptoms despite optical, optimal medical therapy who had a narrow QRS, were randomized to CCM plus OMT versus OMT alone. The primary endpoint of the trial was improvement in ventilatory anaerobic thresholds in the CCM group, which was not met. However, OMT plus CCM, the OMT plus CCM group demonstrated an improved quality of life, uh, improved New York Heart Association class, and improved peak VO2 at six months. And at 12 months, there was comparable all-cause mortality and hospitalizations that satisfied a pre-specified non-inferiority safety endpoint. A subgroup analysis that was pre-specified in the fixed heart failure 5 study revealed that a left ventricular ejection fraction greater than or equal to 25 was a predictor of an increased efficacy of CCM. 
Uh, and so this prompted the follow-up study, Fix Heart Failure 5C. In 5C, 160 symptomatic heart failure patients with an LVDF between 25% and 45% and a narrow QRS were studied similar to the pro, um, protocol of Fix Heart Failure 5. And CCM therapy was associated with an increased peak VO2, an improvement in the NYHA functional class, improvement in six-minute walk tests, and an improvement in quality of life. A secondary composite endpoint of cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalizations was also observed in Fix Heart Failure 5C. So these two studies were the major uh, kind of data uh, points and evidence for leading to the 2019 breakthrough approval of CCM by the FDA. Several other studies um, uh, have shown that CCM improves NYHA class, peak VO2, and quality of life, as well as a composite endpoint of reduced heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular mortality, with some retrospective studies arguing uh, for a mortality benefit uh, of CCM. The available evidence comes from modest, modestly sized trials with a relatively short duration of follow-up, and it remains unknown whether there's improved benefit over longer time periods and whether CCM longitudinally results in a sustained improvement in LVEF and improves major cardiovascular outcomes. Ongoing studies uh, are setting out to investigate the safety and e efficacy of combination devices, uh, including CCM and ICD combo devices, and these may reduce the need for multiple leads and generators. Also, a pilot study called ccm hefpef of 47 patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction demonstrated an improvement in quality of life, suggesting that the benefits of CCM may extend to the growing population of patients with HEFPEF. The ongoing AIM Higher clinical trial will lend valuable insight into the role of CCM in HEFPEF and has an estimated completion date in 2026. So more exciting uh, work in the CCM field to come. I'd like to thank my co-authors, um, Dr. Mella, who's here with us today, Dr. Hanley, Dr. Singh, uh, and also um, Giorgio Madranda, who helped with our uh, central illustration for the, uh, for the submission. Um, and thank you again for the opportunity. I look forward to uh, our discussion. Well, uh, Dr. Pipila, thank you so much for um, the uh, presentation and congratulations again on uh, this beautiful publication that summarized very well the topic. Um, first, um, I would like to direct a, a question to Dr. Mela. This is a new technology. Uh, this is something that we're not uh, used to see in, uh, currently in, in patient, but um, can you share a little bit your experience with this new FDA-approved uh, uh, technology? Can you share some experience of a uh, patient uh, in your practice? Uh, what was the impact on your patient and how many patients you did so far? I would like to also thank Danny for a great presentation, a great synopsis of uh, uh, the article that hopefully uh, the readers will enjoy and uh, also get the information that they need for this relatively new technology. I would say new to us as well. Uh, it, we have been implanting these devices for a little less than a year now. Um, uh, some uh, f following clinical uh, the clinical release, the FDA approval of the device, and some as part of the trials that we are participating in. And uh, I will talk a little bit about. Uh, so our experience is limited and short. Uh, as it is for many of these uh, studies that uh, uh, we have also included in our manuscript. Uh, anecdotally, I would say uh, of uh, a patient of mine that actually uh, received the a device that offers CCM as part of the trial, the Integra trial, which is uh, the combination in one device of ICD and CCM uh, technology, uh, that when I met her, she had told me that she could hardly walk across the room and shortness of breath was her main uh, complaint. And uh, during our follow-up follow the other day, about a month after she received the device, uh, for the first time I saw some hope on, on her face. She was so desperate when she came to us. She was so disappointed. Nothing could help her. And this time when I asked her how she's doing, she smiled at me and she said, I, I 
don't want to say it, but I think I'm doing better. And uh, this is great. And thank you very much. So we are all, we are at that stage right now that we are just hopeful along with our patients that uh, uh, receive this therapy that at the very least we will improve their quality of life uh, because as we know, we don't have strong data about improved mortality, but improving the quality of life is so important for many of our patients. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience. I have to say that and also in our limited experience, we have seen some very great success, people on Milrinone that succeed, successfully win Milrinone. So I think there's some hope uh, you're right. So um, a question for you, uh, uh, Daniel. So what do you think is needed for this therapy to reach the level of uh, the guidelines? So it's not yet in the guideline. And you know that we have, you know, the top four drugs and CRT, et cetera. So what do you think is needed for this therapy to 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 get uh, in the guideline? Thank you for the question. And I think that's a great question because... Um, Although it's been around for several years and a lot of studies have been done over the past few decades, it's relatively um, underutilized and underheard of, I think, um, even since 2019. So I think there's um, certainly a number of things that would be nice to see. Um, one would certainly be a few kind of studies showing mortality benefit or cardiovascular um you know, uh, death improvement, some kind of like harder mortality outcomes or outcomes that we can say prolong people's lives because quality of life is important, but guidelines are focused on things like GDMT and CRT that have had kind of more kind of um, hard outcomes proven. I think another area of interest is a novel target population. So I think um, the idea that CRT non-responders, uh, people who fit who meet criteria for CCM therapy that are CRT non-responders, if we had more evidence to suggest that this may be a therapy for those populations or in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, if this uh, this, this study shows evidence, um, people with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction without pacing indications are kind of left without electrical therapies for their heart failure. And so I think that would be either novel target populations or kind of harder outcomes in the populations that CCM is already eligible for. Yeah, so I have to say that uh, I'm a structural heart doctor and I do a lot of mitral clip and tricuspid clip. And a lot of time what you see is the quality of life improvement in patient and you get them out of the hospital. So I agree to you that potentially reducing hospitalization and quality of life probably would be enough on those patients that are already very sick. Um, I'm going to have a, one more question um, for Dr. Mela and, and Dr. Pipilas. Feel free to answer also. But um, this is... Um, like a pacemaker insertion. Um, and a lot of those patients already have a CRT in place or pacemaker lead. What will you uh, like to see in the future uh, as an improvement uh, for this technology to be maybe more adapted? Uh, as uh, someone who, who deal with a lot of tricuspid regurgitation, every time I see leads through the tricuspid valve, I get nervous. But um, do you think this is um, a therapy that is... Uh, um, and mean to in, in evolve in this form of delivery, or what is the uh, the next step for this therapy, or, or some sort of improvement? I think uh, there is a wish list about this technology as well, and uh, uh, one important wish is being examined right now. So to have the combined device that is an IC ICD that can offer uh, CCM therapy as well. Uh, so instead of the patient to have a completely different system with one or two leads on one side and then get two more leads in a completely different system on the other side of the chest, now there's one device with two leads. Um, uh the the technical aspect of the uh, implantation is ac actually quite simple uh, and we have been implanting leads in the positions where these leads need to go in the septal position for quite some time so uh, that aspect is uh, quite simple uh, but it seems that there could be some, 
tools that are designated for these implants, which right now do not exist, and we just choose from the armamentarium that we already have. Uh, but having designated leads, designated tools that make these procedures easy for us and for the short duration for the patient, uh, I think will be uh, very important. The combination of CRT and CCM has not been examined, and I think it is going to take a few years to have data on that. But of course, if that data becomes favorable, having one device that offers all three therapies, ICD, CRT, and CCM, uh, would be uh, actually uh, one great goal for the future. All right, so um, I have to thank you, uh, both of you, and also congratulate all you co-author for this uh, beautiful manuscript that, and I really invite the uh, JSKY um, uh, um, member and non-member to read your paper uh, that I really enjoy. And uh, I want to thank Jay Sky for the opportunity to host um, this uh, great interview. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.